If you're a regular viewer of this channel, I'm certain that the topic of Windows XP needs no introduction to you. Over the past few years, I've created countless videos on XP. From tutorials, to betas, to a development history series, to the multitude of unofficial versions, you get my point. But even after all of these videos, there is still one official Windows XP release that I've never touched on. And believe me, I've wanted to. I just never had the means to showcase it. But that all changed recently when a couple of very generous viewers, Mitchell and Greg, donated a few touchscreen computers that run Windows XP Tablet PC Edition. And that's what today's video is all about. We're going to be taking an in-depth look at both these machines themselves and the touchscreen OS that powers them. Believe it or not, XP Tablet PC Edition was not Microsoft's first attempt at creating a touch-based operating system. That all began back in 1992 with two separate development projects, WinPad and Windows for Pen Computing. While both of these projects had a goal of creating a touchscreen OS, they had different use cases. WinPad, which I did a history video on here, was intended to be used on a companion device, a PDA if you will. It eventually evolved into Windows CE and later Windows Phone. Windows for Pen Computing, on the other hand, was more of an add-on to Windows 3.1, which allowed the user, if they had a supported device, to interact with the operating system by using a stylus. It was this project that eventually led to the creation of XP Tablet PC Edition. Yes, this was a specialized version of XP based on the Professional Edition, which includes a few enhancements that enable stylus use. Obviously, Microsoft was not the only player in this initiative, as there were multiple OEMs that developed machines to comply with what would become known as Microsoft's Tablet PC specification. These machines first appeared to consumers in 2003, an interesting tidbit is that unlike most other editions of XP, an end user could not simply purchase this version of the operating system outright. It was only pre-installed on OEM computers and available to software developers and volume licensors. There were also two separate versions of the OS, the original release in late 2002 and an updated version called Tablet PC Edition 2005. The machines that I have here run the latter. Speaking of, let's take a look at them. We'll start with the one that Mitchell sent me, which is a Toshiba Portage M200. Released in 2004, it sports a single-core 1.8GHz Intel Pentium M CPU, 512MB of RAM, a 30GB 5400RPM hard drive, and an NVIDIA GeForce FX Go 5200 dedicated GPU, all for a price of $1,899. The machine has a decent selection of ports, with most of them being on the back. Here you'll find the power port, two USB, a VGA out for hooking up a second display, and a modem and ethernet port. On the left we have a PCMCIA card reader, a Wi-Fi switch, and infrared. The front is where you'll find an SD card reader, mic and headphone jacks, and a volume wheel to adjust your headphones volume. The primary stylus is located on the right side of the machine, but there's also a smaller, secondary stylus located in the battery compartment, just in case. One piece of hardware that you won't find is a CD drive. This was a major cut from this machine, but I assume it was done to save space. Still, this machine came out in 2004, a time when CDs and DVDs were still used rather frequently. But keep in mind that this machine was designed as a hybrid combining both laptop and tablet functionality. If you wanted a more powerful computer with a DVD drive, you could just go out and purchase a regular laptop. The killer app of this machine, if you will, has to be the rotating touchscreen. This allows the user to easily switch from the keyboard and trackpad to the stylus and the touchscreen. When in laptop mode, the machine behaves just as you would expect any laptop to. But you will notice a couple of minor differences. For one, there is no power button located anywhere on the keyboard surface. It has been moved to the actual display so that you can power on the machine in both laptop and tablet mode. To switch the machine into tablet mode, all you have to do is swivel the display panel 180 degrees to the left. From here, you can set the display up on a sort of stand, or close it down to be flush with the base by rotating the display lock. 
When you do this, the machine will automatically switch into portrait mode. There's not an accelerometer, so you can't rotate the display's orientation by simply turning it. But this is only one of the form factors that was used on XP tablet PCs. The three machines that Greg sent me showcase another form factor. These motion computing M1400 machines feature only a touchscreen display. However, motion computing did offer a detachable keyboard that could be used if desired. Greg also included a stand so that the machine can be propped up and used at an angle. This model here sports a 1.1 GHz Intel Pentium M processor with integrated graphics, 1 GB of RAM, and a 40 GB hard drive. Most of the I.O. on this machine are located on the bottom. From left to right we have a modem port, an Ethernet port, VGA out, a docking station port to connect the keyboard accessory, two USB, one firewire, and both a mic and headphone jack. On the right side you'll find the power port, power switch, and a PCMCIA card slot. Looking at this machine from the top down, you'll see a couple of things around the touchscreen. On the top left, we have a fingerprint reader, which could be used to securely log into the machine. And on the right side, we have five buttons that are assigned to open various applications and perform system functions. That center button acts like a set of arrow keys. On the top right is where you'll find the indicator lights and the stylus. Now since this machine does not have a built-in keyboard, the BIOS is actually accessed by using the touchscreen. If you touch the screen while the tablet is booting up, you'll get a list of options, one of which will allow you to enter the BIOS, which you can then use the stylus to navigate around in. Pretty cool. Greg told me that these machines cost around $1400 each back when he purchased them new. Okay, so let's talk a bit about XP Tablet PC Edition itself. If you haven't figured out by now, these touch surfaces are not multi-touch. You have to use the stylus to interact with the display. Something that I find super cool is how the mouse cursor interacts with the stylus. If you hover the pen over the display without making contact with it, the cursor will actually move around. Making contact with the display is the equivalent of clicking your mouse. It's actually quite simple to use with regular applications, but XP Tablet PC Edition comes with a few exclusive programs designed specifically for the stylus. First up is Windows Journal, which is, well, a journal. You can use it to write things using the stylus. Super simple stuff, but it works very well. Also, the fact that this display is not multi-touch is actually a huge advantage because it means that you can rest your hand on the display when writing and not have to worry about any unwanted clicks. There's also Sticky Notes, which is basically a slimmed down version of the journal with the added ability to record audio notes. Microsoft also bundled a game that can be played with the stylus called Inkball. The goal is to get the orbs into their respective holes by drawing lines with the stylus. A newer version of this game was bundled with Windows Vista, but it was removed from Windows entirely after that. Similar to the WinPad Alpha build that we recently took a look at, XP Tablet Edition supports handwriting recognition across the entire system. To access the interface, press the input panel button next to the start menu. This application has three different modes. The first one, called Writing Pad, allows you to freely write with a stylus and the system will attempt to convert what you're writing into computerized text. Press the insert button to paste the text into whatever application you're using. The second mode, called Character Map, lets you write one letter at a time and it instantly converts it to text. The last mode is an on-screen keyboard if you would prefer to use that over handwriting recognition. This input panel will stay on top of every application that you open. It can also be moved to the top of the screen or undocked and moved freely around. The Toshiba machine features a really cool program called Senseva Symbol Commander. By pressing the button on the stylus and drawing one of the symbols shown here, the system will perform an action. This can be done from anywhere on the system with any application open, just as long as the symbol commander is running in the background. For example, if I press and hold the button and draw a triangle, symbol commander will open up and display my shortcuts. I can do things like save documents, minimize windows, and even rotate the display orientation. You can also do this by pressing one of the buttons in the lower right corner. The same is true for the motion computing machine. You just press one of the buttons on the right side of the display. 
Toshiba also included the shortcut buttons near the touchscreen, which, when hovered over, will display what action they will perform if tapped. There's also a program called Pen Button, which you can use to customize what these buttons do. You can also have different sets of actions per application, opening up a whole world of automation and customizability. Overall, I have to say that I'm very impressed with both of these machines and the OS itself. Having never used an XP tablet before, it was really cool to explore this specialized operating system for the first time. It's almost like a time capsule, a testament to what tablet computing was like over 15 years ago. That's all for today's video. I want to give a huge thank you to both Mitchell and Greg for the generous donations that made this video possible, and to all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I will see you in the next video.